Sometimes I feel like I'm living in two different worlds. Like now, I feel like I'm a trail rider. I like boosting jumps, charging downhill, but then I close my eyes and it's like I dream I'm an XC racer. I wanna attack uphills. I wanna put out big watts. Am I a trail rider dreaming of racing XC or am I an XC racer dreaming of riding trail? It's quite the philosophical dilemma and it makes buying the right mountain bike pretty tricky. The perfect mountain bike needs to meet my standards for climbing speed, pedaling efficiency, lightweight, but also satisfy my hunger for shrouping turns, smashing rocks, just straight hucking. And no bike has really managed to do that. Oh, until now. Hey, I'm Bruce from the Pro's Closet, and today I'm giving you the breakdown on this specialized Epic Evo. Now, a lot of mountain bikers are probably already pretty familiar with the specialized Epic. It's been around for 20 years now. It's won World Cups, World Championships, it's Olympic Gold, Cape Epic. It's there probably no even won your local XC race. Needless to say, it's but one of the fastest, seat, most successful cross-country mountain bikes ever. Shirt. Now, the Epic has always been a pretty polarizing bike, and that's because of one unique feature, the brain. Now, in XC racing, especially at the top level, pedaling efficiency is the holy grail. And Specialized solved the pedaling efficiency issue with the brain. It's a proprietary technology that uses an inertia valve. It has an inertia valve in the fork and at the rear axle connected to the rear shock. Now when the trail is smooth, the inertia valve stays closed, keeping your suspension feeling firm and efficient. But when you hit a bump, it actually opens instantly to absorb it. Now, a lot of riders, especially racers, they absolutely love the brain, but others, not so much. Now, the Specialized Evo lineup has always been about pushing the boundaries of bike design. And with the Epic Evo, Specialized took its most purebred cross-country racer and beefed it up to make it more downhill capable. They turned it into a downcountry bike. Downcountry. It's kind of a, a questionable term in the industry right now, but hey, 10 years ago, I remember people making fun of Enduro, and look at that now. Oh my God. Regardless of how you define it, the Epic Evo really epitomizes this growing category of bikes. It retains a lot of the same features that make the Epic such a great XC race bike. It has a full carbon fiber frame, it can fit two bottles in the front triangle. It has a linkage driven, single pivot, rear suspension design with flex stays. Mm, so hot right now. So hot right now. Overall, the whole package is efficient. It's stiff, it's lightweight. But crucially, the Epic Evo does a couple things different. The first big thing it changes is it ditches the brain entirely. The suspension is free to move as it wishes. The other big change is that it has more travel. Now the standard Epic, it has 100 millimeters of travel in the front and rear. The Epic Evo, it has 120 millimeters in the front and 110 millimeters in the rear. And we all know more travel means more send. Now, since the brain is gone and there's more travel, it's not gonna be as efficient or race focused as a standard Epic, but it can still pedal long distances, it can still climb really fast, and it can still hang in a lot of XC races. And there are actually a couple upsides to ditching the brain too. With it gone, the frame is actually 200 grams lighter than the standard Epic frame. And instead of a proprietary rear shock, it uses a standard metric rear shock, which means it's easier to service, easier to replace. You can even upgrade it if you want. The head angle has actually been slacked out a full degree to 66.5 degrees. The build also comes with four piston brakes. It comes with a dropper post. It, with those sorts of components and numbers, it's edging into trail bike territory. And I think for a lot of riders who occasionally race, who want a light, fast, efficient bike that's still fun and pretty capable, 
the Epic Evo is probably one of the best choices out there. And I really mean that because this is actually my bike. I own this bike. I bought it from TPC with my own money. Now, granted, I did make a few upgrades so it suits my riding style a little more. And you'll notice the biggest change I made was adding this Pike Ultimate Fork to the front. It replaces the SID that came on the bike. It has the same 35 millimeter stanchions, the same 120 millimeters of travel, but the big difference is it has the Charger 2.1 damper. It does weigh a couple hundred grams more, but the damper is so much more composed, so much plusher feeling, especially when the trail gets really rough. And I'm willing to push around that extra weight just for that extra downhill capability. Now, keeping with the downhill friendly theme, I took these Revel RW30 carbon wheels off my enduro bike. These wheels are made using fusion fiber. It's really stiff, really tough, really impact resistant. And what's really cool is that if you manage to break them, which I probably won't, they're recyclable too. Now on the wheels, I have sort of a compromise between an XC race tire and a burlier trail tire. They're Schwalbe Navi Nix in the super ground casing. Of course, they're tan walls, by the way. Tan walls look great on black bikes. Inside the tires, I have Cush Core XC inserts for a little extra puncture protection and damping, especially when I'm straight lining through rock gardens. Um, the Interesting thing with the cranks here, I've got Race Face Nex G5 cranks. They're sort of, you know, retaining that cross country flavor because they are some of the lightest carbon cranks on the market and they do have the cinch power meter installed. But I kind of negated all the weight savings there by putting these Crank Brothers Mallet E pedals on, which I really prefer. With all these downhill enhancements, I never really need to shy away from any sort of descent, which is really cool. But even still, the frame is so light that the total build comes out to 26 pounds and 12 ounces, which is really good for a trail bike. It's still pretty good for a full suspension XC bike. It is an XC bike at heart. And I think it's like way more capable than any XC bike I've ever ridden. In fact, this trail we're at now, it's really rocky, really technical, and my fastest time down it is on this bike. Not my enduro bike, not my trail bike, this bike. With the Epic Evo, you do have to be a little more attentive, a lot more precise, but overall, it's just capable enough to ride all the same gnarly stuff that I do on a long travel trail bike. And it's definitely a lot more exciting when I do it, and a lot more rewarding too. Matthew Vanderpool. Tom Pitcock, the best in the world, they're behind me. I've got to gun it to stay ahead. Yeah. Where the Epic Evo yeah. really shines though is in between all these gnarly features. Because it's so light, so efficient, it really encourages you to stomp on the gas and go really fast, as fast as you can. And that means you get a lot of speed, both uphill and down. Nowadays, I tend to reach for my Epic Evo before my enduro bike or my trail bike. It's become my favorite mountain bike, and I really have no issues with it. My only nitpick maybe is that the bars can hit the top tube if you crash, but it's an issue with a lot of XC bikes. I do have a little helicopter tape there just in case. Overall, the Epic Evo has really made me a believer in this whole down country thing. If you're interested in an Epic Evo or any certified pre-owned mountain bike, be sure to check TPC out at theproscloset.com. If you're interested in a deeper rundown on my personal Epic Evo build, I'll link to the TPC mag in the description below where I did a full write-up. And please like and subscribe because it'll convince my bosses to let me keep making cool videos about cool bikes like this. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.